All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We have Mel for our Thursday nights with Mel, and we have special guest Susan Lynn joining us today. Yay, Susan. The, part, the yeah. party crasher. <laughs> We're so happy to have you, Susan. I'm happy to be here. And I'm excited for Susan because she has an event coming up October 13th, 14th, and 15th at the Doubletree right by O'Hare. Uh, that's in Rosemont, but it's close to Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, it's sold out. So I'm really excited Thank for you. you. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. It's exciting. So if you guys are interested in future stuff, you know, email Susan and she can take your name. So if she does have something futuristic, Thank you please so much. You're on the list. <laughs> Thank you, Mel. I would suggest, you know, going to future workshops with Susan because uh, when we met in, in Sedona this past year, you know, for me anyway, it was kind of an instant click. I didn't get a chance to talk to, to you, Susan, much because I was busy working. Yeah. But um, I, I think you'll get a lot out of it. So Yeah. Yeah. I met you right off. I, I got off the plane, right? I met you and Jen Lynn were the first people that I met. And we were hanging out chatting. Yeah. There we were. It was an amazing experience. Sedona will forever be a special, special event that I was able to participate in. Just amazing. It was fun. I enjoyed it. It was amazing. Um, and yeah. last week, Mel wasn't on. Um, he told me not to say anything. I, I know that Linda had said something, um, but Mel has some good news to share today as well. You want to share your good news? You go ahead. Oh, about about how you had another biopsy and it was uh, oh. no answer. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's like, <laughs> yeah, He's sorry. got so much good news. You didn't know which one to, you were going to share. <laughs> right. um, yeah, because we'd already talked about it before we went live. Um, yeah. I kept feeling like I, again, like I had like a grain of something caught my throat and <clears throat> I was afraid to look because I would check my throat maybe once every week. And that was like a week before I found this other lesion. And um, so Tuesday I was looking and there was like, it looked like a blister like thing. And I freaked. <laughs> so I called the doctor and they could get me in Thursday. So they did, they they wanted to wait two weeks to do the biopsy. And I said, no, I want it now because I don't want to deal with this. So they did. They just wanted to be on the safe side. And I got the results back yesterday. And there was no cancer. And there was no, they also went ahead and checked for DNA in the for human papilloma virus because that's what caused the cancer. And yeah. they said I was probably infected 30 or 40 years ago. Wow. So there was no viral DNA. So good. Yeah, it's wonderful. Everybody, please, please, every six months or a year, go and get a complete oral exam. You know, and I'll just finish on this note, then I'll quit talking so much. Um, my husband had the doctor check his mouth and throat. He knew what it was like to get that tube put down there for him to look. He goes, That wasn't fun. I go, Oh, yeah, okay, welcome to my club. <laughs> but anyway. He asked the doctor how it usually presents, and she said, usually it's a lump on the outside of the neck, which means that the cancer has spread from the primary source to the lymph node, and that lymph node becomes cancerous and it becomes enlarged. And she looked at me and she said, you don't know how lucky you are that yours went the other way and appeared on your tonsil. And I said, oh, no, I know I'm lucky. Because if it goes in the lymph node, you have to have radiation. Yeah. And I didn't have to have radiation or chemo. So everybody, please, if you feel something, don't be afraid. Get it taken care of. Because <laughs> this cancer, you know, it's 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 invasive and it can spread pretty quickly. So yeah. please take care of it. And yeah. I was getting so much love in the chat. You know, we've been all sending you a lot of love. And I have to say, the whole community has been wonderful when you guys did that surprise for me in the fundraiser mm -hmm. susan i got your note that was beautiful um and and i said i made a youtube video short one last night and i think all of us owe thanks to you know the people who watch us because we wouldn't yes, be yes, anything yes, without yes, yes yes and i didn't I, you know I, I i the response was so beautiful there's no way i could answer everybody so i just thought i'm doing it just a blanket thank you but i am very grateful and i'm grateful for our our, our, our audience our yeah. community this community is amazing that's correct it is and i'm thankful for all of that me too you know the one good thing in this community is i made very good friends i remember talking to kevin and i'm like you need a youtube channel and i i emailed him on on his on his, on his 
No, I emailed him on his channel. I said, you, you want to be on my channel? And he said, I don't think I'm ready. I said, okay. So I think it was about, what, six months later, Kevin? I started my channel in beginning of July 2021 because I just hit two years in July. And I think you messaged me in, like, September. Yes. And then we did our first show, like, after the beginning of the year, 2022. You were amazing on the first show, actually. Well, thank you. I watched your first show, and I'm like, oh, wow. He reminds me of me when I first did my first television show live years ago. I was like. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I was like, I need to get used to, because it was so new still. Because I knew when I, when we did shows together, um, it was going to blow up. And so I just needed a few months to. Yeah, it but it, it did really grow after our first show together. It, 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 they do, you know. I'm pretty, and I, and you know, I like when people get comfortable with it. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's a miracle of it. But making a lot of friends too in the psychic community is, I, yeah. I just, I'm so blessed. All of us are, I think. We are. We are. So okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> well, before we start, we're going to be doing political world event questions. Um, I, I feel like with Susan, there's just a lot of back and forth. So I don't know how many questions we'll get to. But um, if you have any questions, go ahead and write them in the chat, all caps, a couple heart emojis. I'll get as many start as possible. And please make sure to hit that thumbs up on this video. And if you're not subscribed to any of our channels, please go and subscribe. Um, it really helps. So is there any questions that either of you would like to look at before we take chat questions or do we just want to go ahead and get started i'm, I'm good with getting started all right i i'm good with getting started that's good kevin do you want me to start comments for you or how do you want me yeah. to do this? It, it doesn't matter i've gotten a bunch of starts before we take a question maggie has said um if we could send oh. prayers to cash peters and all of his kitty that's, that's doing well I'm definitely sending oh. a lot of prayers and, and love and here we were just talking about mouth cancer. I know. Isn't oh, that weird? It depends on the type of mouth cancer. If it's malignant melanoma, which is skin cancer, but dogs can get it and cats can get it, and there's not a lot to do for it. Oh, you know? That is I heartbreaking. Think, I think the best thing yeah. to do is make Kitty comfortable and pain-free. And when Kitty stops eating and hiding, then you'll know it's time. Yeah. And when well, people say, that. you'll know, and I'm like, no, I don't know. Because... <laughs> So when I started training dogs and I learned about animals, that's when I learned that that's how you know when it's time. Yeah. Definitely sending Cash Peters and all is a lot of love. Um, it feels like it feels like it's kind of a reoccurring thing. I mean, even with my dog, and I've heard around that time, right. um, a lot of people in the community struggling with, with animals and, and their health. So sending a lot of love to anyone who has any yes. pets that are, are battling something. You know, our animals are, um, well, I say dogs and cats are angels with fur. And, and yeah. birds are feathers. I mean, are angels with feathers. So. Yeah, I agree, Mel. Uh, Paul Roberts says, a question concerning money. Will home prices fall soon in price? Not a crash, but at least 30% in value? Thank you. Oh. 30% is a big drop. That's a big yeah. drop. I that's don't almost, think that's almost a crash. <laughs> yeah. Uh, huge crash. Maybe the, Maybe it does need to drop that much, but that's a big drop. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I had predicted that when the feds met, they might raise the interest rates one more time. And they did that mm -hmm. to stop the crash from occurring like happened in 2008. Like in 2008, one day my townhouse was worth over $400,000. And the next day it wasn't even worth $100,000. Oh, it's wow. insane, right? Insane. Oh, and I didn't sell it. I, I paid the mortgage. Of course, they didn't bring the rate down. Of course not. No, <laughs> not. Either. We want our money. But um, I just knew if I sat on it long enough, it would come back. And it has. So I, I, you know, I think they did that. They they raised the the prime rate to to prevent another crash because it yeah. was coming. And so I think after the next time they raise the rate, then they'll start bringing it down, which which will bring housing prices down. But a lot of it is supply and demand, and so this put more supply on the market. So yeah, but I don't, I you know, I, I don't think thirty percent. Maybe it is, but I maybe. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I'm thinking more at seven percent, ten percent. And regionally, would, right? Regionally, yeah. there's certainly going to be some areas that might get even twenty percent reduction. But I think if you had to be like median across the board, you would say like eight percent if you had to average it all out. That's what I mean. To ten, what do you yeah. think? I was picking up the same. I was going to say like between 10 and 15%, but it 30, 30 feels way high. Um, but it also, like you were saying, it depends on if you're like in a, um, you know, if, if there's still that demand, if you're in a big city um, or, you know, if, if it's, you know, a smaller market, but I do feel prices coming down and it feels more like into next year. Um, yes. And I've been, I've been saying that for a while. Um, well, I, I think at some point next year they may start to try to drop the interest rates a little bit, maybe like summer, fall. Um, yeah. But it does feel like housing prices, like spring, feel like they go down a little bit. It's not a crash, but it feels like the overinflation's kind of balancing out. You know, I think I think Susan, you're right. Is where you live. You know, prices in California was so high, who could afford it? So then everybody moved to Colorado, and now you yeah. can catch those prices. People yeah. in Chicago are moving to Tennessee. Why? I love people in Tennessee. Don't get me wrong, but <laughs> I grew up in the South. I'm like, okay, um, but <laughs> now you can't touch property in Nashville. Right. So, mm. you know, Florida market's going to crash because right. of hurricanes. Right. Things That's like right. That. I so think it's really Charles regional. Exactly. I think Charleston, Savannah, even with hurricanes, those property values are going to come up. Uh, you know, yeah. Hawaii, well, not well, Maui, but, you know, Hawaii property values have always tr been traditionally high, but I do see those coming down a bit. So not, not maybe it has to do with Maui. I don't know. But, um, you know, but I think when people move because, you know, they want to escape high prices over here, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And so at some point they get overinflated over here. You know? Yeah. 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 Anyway. But there is price movement. So if you guys are looking to buy or sell, be aware yeah. of that in general, because mm -hmm. there is definitely price movement all across the board. Yeah. Correct. I never Real thought quick. a time when, you know, prices in Nashville would be a little bit more than in Chicago, but here we are. Yeah. Here we are. I want to say thank you for uh, the super sticker, Tina D and hey. um, and Mags. Thank you so much. Oh, Very generous Mag, of you that's both. oh, that was so nice. Yeah. All right. Hi, Sharon. Sharon Sipe is with us. I made hey. Sharon. I made Sharon a moderator on did my. You figure it out. I did. I figured it out. So Sharon, you you can be a moderator. You're a moderator now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all the moderators. Wow, yeah. we couldn't yeah. do it without you guys. Woo. Yeah. All right. All right. Maggie, who do you think if Trump is disqualified from running, would Biden also consider dropping out and letting somebody younger take over? I don't feel that at all. I don't, I don't, think, think I don't so. see it. I'll tell you who scares me in the Republican Party is that guy Ramaswamy or whatever his name mm. um, Yeah. You know, the Satan I knew was, as Linda would say, a nothing burger, but. Ramaswamy kind of scares me. You know, people think he can't get it, but that's what they said about Trump. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can we can talk question. about Ramaswamy if we want. I did say I did feel um, him gaining some popularity before that um, that last GOP debate because he he very much has, you know, um, his energy is very similar to Trump. And I do think a lot of people underestimate him. And I feel like him gaining some steam, not enough to be like runner up or get the nomination. Um, and, you know, too, you know, I feel like there's a small percentage of younger MAGA voters that really like him. Um, but I mean, overall, I, I feel like a lot of Republicans would um, have an issue with his nationality. I was just thinking that, you know, yeah. for a party who has a lot of underlying racism and bigotry, well, now it's coming to the surface. Yeah. How how hypocritical, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, Ramaswamy kind of scared me when I heard him say, well, you know, with Russia, we'll just let Russia, with the war in Ukraine, we'll, we'll just let Russia keep what they took no, and no. have Ukraine settle for what's oh, left over and i'm like that will not work that's right. not gonna fly and putin said if trump 
is out of the race, then he would show support to Ramaswamy. So I think Putin's already interfering. That's what my guides tell me. So <laughs> yeah. What were you picking up, Susan? Well, I'm wondering with what you guys were saying, I'm wondering if he'll end up being a spoiler, right? As he, if he's going to take some of the vote away from, say, a Nikki Haley or uh, whoever the Republican Party finds in the gutter and puts up there to run. You know what I mean? I like that, Susan. I, <laughs> that's what I like about you. You don't hold back. I love right. what we find in the gutter. That's about right. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, with all of the people running, and they're all running so low, you know, there's really no way unless, something takes out Trump, that Trump's not going to get the nomination. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't see him as president. I never did. I don't I don't see him as president. But do you guys see him getting the nomination? Well, we've you know, talked about lot, it a little bit. A lot so can happen between now and next. And it's going to. Mm -hmm. And I told everybody, I, I heard James Cargo say this when Biden won, when everybody was nervous about Wisconsin. He said, Put your razor blades back on the shelf. Put your Valium back on the shelf. So I'm telling everybody, put your Valium up on the shelf. You'll probably have to take a few between now and then. But so much can happen. And I think that Trump is in for some very, very unpleasant things between yeah, now and yeah. then. And so. I, I haven't seen him getting the nomination, but I know a lot of people do. That's why I was asking you guys, because I'm, I mean, I'm open yeah. He may get it. I don't see him really running. I don't see him really I don't see him really running running, but he might get the nomination. What do you think, Kevin? Do you think he's going to get it? Well, we talked about it a little bit Did on we? your channel our last show. Um, I don't see it very clearly, but I feel like where the energy sits right now, he's more than likely going to get it. But I see something taking him out before um 2024, like summer of next year. Um, and it could it could very well be around the Republican convention time too, um, because I feel like disarray and chaos in the Republican Party. Like, what do we do? We got to throw somebody in. But I do feel like there's a bit of things at play because it it still feels a bit murky to me who actually gets the nomination. I feel like Trump yeah. could be taken out beforehand, but yeah. where the energy sits right now, I feel like he's most likely going to get it. And then yeah, sir, yes, yes, yeah, he's the front runner. I'd be surprised if it gets it. I could be wrong, but mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to respectfully disagree here. But uh, if he gets it, he won't keep it. That's for sure. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's a really good point to make, right, Mel? Because yes. if he gets it, like James Carville says, go in the bathroom, put your razor up. It's not the <laughs> end of the world. He he doesn't have the energy. None of us are seeing this man be president. None of us. So yeah. uh, try not to freak out if he does get the nomination. Yeah. It really just means more chaos. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. He, That's what he wants. Kevin and I came up with our D's. Deceive, divert, detract, distract, divide, and destroy. And D's of being a Republican. All the D's. <laughs> well, the MAG is anyway. <laughs> yes. Wow. Uh, well, if you don't see Trump, Mel, is there anybody that's on your radar who may get the nomination? Great question. Great question. Well, for the Dems... I'll tell you, maybe not this election cycle, but I've got my eye long run on Westmore in Maryland. Mm. Oh, nice. Well, I got a funny feeling at some point he will nice. be. And I said that about Obama, and everybody said, no way. And that's what I see for Westmore. Yeah, I could see that too, Mel. I don't know. For me, it feels like he's maybe a little bit later. I'm feeling good about like Gavin Newsom 2028. Oh, there you go. I think at some point we'll have a gay president. Yeah. Well, well, let's let's ask Mel because <laughs> this is one thing that sometimes Kevin and I have been known to disagree about. Do you see um, Mayor Pete being vi vice president in yes, twenty yep. in like twenty eight or possibly twenty four if Biden has to step down? I see Pete Buttigieg being vice president at some point, yes, and within yeah. our lifetimes. Well, me too, but like. Next year, if if President Biden had to step down and Kamala Harris takes the wheel, well, I like Kamala, but I don't know if she's got what it takes to win. I'm mm. everybody, please don't send me nasty emails. I, I'm not. I like Kamala. I agree with that statement, Mel. By the way, um, I think you know, Susan. I'm picking up my guy. Show me twenty eight. Twenty eight. Yeah, me too. So twenty eight. I mean, let's just blow the barn doors off. You know, we could have Gavin Newsom. We could have Wes. 
yeah. and Mayor Pete. I mean, you know. Uh, what do you feel about Whitmer for Kamala a running and winning. I see Biden stepping down and Kamala taking over mm -hmm. midstream. Yeah. In that case, she needs a VP. And I don't know who that is. It can't be Gavin Newsom because then when you have two Californians. No. Because that could right. change the Senate. And you can't tap West because <laughs> then you have two African Americans. So that's where Mayor Pete comes in. That's where Kevin sees Mayor Pete. And I'm like, the Republicans would just self-emulate. <laughs> they would self-emulate. I mean, it would just be over. Well, they could always come back and say, how are you picking on Pete Buttigieg when, uh, you know, you didn't say much about Ramaswamy. So if you're a bigot or a racist, you don't get to, you don't, you don't get to pick and choose. <laughs> mm. I do feel like 2024, though, Buttigieg, I don't know. I feel energy around Secretary of State and then maybe a yes. yes. How do you what do you feel about that, Mel? I think he's Buddha Judge Secretary of State. State. Of commerce. Um, you know, people might say he's not experienced enough, but he but he is a consummate politician and he's very yeah. great. Fantastic. And I, I think he'd be an ex I think he'll be in the running, absolutely. I think he would be a fantastic Secretary yeah. of State. He's very diplomatic. How many languages does he speak? Um, he would be fantastic, I think. Yeah. He can hold his own. I watch him in some of those hearings. Yes. Whoa. You know, he can yes. he can cut your head mm -hmm. off. You don't even know it's gone. That's right. <laughs> Clean. Oh, yeah. So well. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I see him standing up to the likes of Poopkin. Yeah. 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 He and he's so smart and articulate, too. Like, um, and he has that foreign um i mean he was in the military so he's got some some foreign um experience there i think he i i really feel energy around secretary of state i do too and then do, that. have either of you two gotten a hit on hurricane lee um that's and that's I, I think they're predicting it will be like a cat four by tomorrow and it's still quite a bit away in the Atlantic. I think it's going to gain in four other than a four. It could be even mm -hmm. a lower level five. I, you know, I sit hitting the East Coast, but further north. Yeah. Uh, Linda Grinnell. Nova Scotia talked, or New York? Well, Linda Grinnell and I talked last night. She asked me what I felt. And she said she felt it hitting New York. And when she said that, I got yes. cold chills. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I agree. Yeah. Sandy. I've been worried about yeah. a Sandy part too. two. You too? Kevin? I just talked about it on Tuesday. If on you guys Tuesday are in New too. York, I would just watch it very carefully, and I would even just start thinking about what you might do. I so. don't see it clearly exactly the path. I think it's still a bit unpredictable as of right now, but I do definitely feel like there's energy in, in, uh, in like the Northeast. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't know if it's New York either. It might be a little bit more Northeast. But I mean, it definitely could. So I think Jersey will get hit. It never hurts to stock up on, you know, water, mm -hmm. you know, canned things. You know, it's funny. I'm like, why is it when there's a natural disaster coming, everybody says stock up on toilet paper? And one of my one of my friends who's really funny said, well, that's because when there's a da natural disaster coming your way, everybody poops in their pants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, toilet paper is like, wait a minute, I need water. I need canned yeah, food. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah. go out behind my tree and go to the washroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I hope so we'll see how it how this tracks in the next couple of days, but I definitely feel like it's it's it could be likely um, you know, some kind of hit. And I've been saying too, I've felt the heaviness in September and it felt um storm related. So yep. all right. Beth wants to know, it's been reported that Fonnie Willis wants to try all 19 Georgia defendants together in October. The judge seems skeptical. Is this a real possibility? I get yes. I mean, oh. it's a possibility. I don't know whether yeah. it'll happen. <laughs> it's, it's a possibility. It's a possibility. It feels like a real possibility. It's a very real possibility, but I... I'm feeling now. It's going to happen, but... I think some of them want to break away from all 19 because they're going to want to wait and see what happens with cheeseburger and see how, if he's uh, found guilty or not. And I think they can then use that as a playbook to how they're going to mount their defense. But in so mm -hmm. doing, they're going to shoot themselves in the foot. 
I think Vonnie Willis is just trying to show that she can do it. You know, let's yeah. do this. I'm ready. And I think that's also telegraphing a message to all these defendants that don't play me. I mm. will meet you whenever you want to be, you know. Fonnie I'm Willis ready. is my hero. I know. Yeah. Me too, yeah. Maybe someday she'll run for president. I would vote for her. Yeah, I see her going up. Do you guys have any idea about where she goes after this? I think at some point she'll be, she's she's a lawyer, and I don't know if she's had much trial experience in federal court, but I see her as being appointed at some point to federal court, and then at some point I can see her on the Supreme Court. Judge, judge, judge. There you go. Yep. Yeah. How about you, I Kevin? I can see that. I don't necessarily feel um, like Congress or Senate. Um, but it feels like an appointed position higher up. Yeah. yeah. I see there's a federal judge. And then at some point, as I said, appointed to the C Supreme Court. Because when I, every time I see her in my clairvoyant eye, mm -hmm. I see her dressed in robes like a judge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a little bit like Chutkin, you know? Like yeah, I'm yeah. there, but I'm not taking any BS. And I'll tell <laughs> right. you who's going to be de judged is uh, Eileen Loose Cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I call her loose cannon. I know we shouldn't name call, but that woman should she's only tried like four cases in her entire that, career. That's the travesty of these mm -hmm. Trump judges. You know, they're just yeah. not even even barely experienced. And some of those people he pardoned, I see those pardons overturned because I think if you pardon somebody to 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 um to cover oh, wow. criminal activity, then and you know that they were engaging wow. criminal activity in order to help you, then they wow. can pull those pardons. And I see a bunch yeah. of them overturned. Wow. What do you see? Do you see that too, Kevin? The pardons Trump gave? Yep. Not all of them, yeah. but many of them. I, I do see energy into reversing those pardons because they were sold. Yeah. Wow. So then... It does take a little bit of time, though. It might be end of next year, 2025. A little bit out there, I think. So then he has a chance to come back and try him again. Mm. You know, I'll just say though, I'm not picking up. I've said all along, I feel like the the def uh, you know the people, the 19 people in Georgia. I felt a bunch of them flipping and pleading guilty and making deals. At least half of them, I think. And then it feels like the other eight or nine. Um, I felt like three like separate cases for them. Well, I think when they find out it's not going to be changed to federal court. Yeah. Um, then I see them flipping. They're going to flip. I see Mark Meadow, Meadow, Meadows. Mm -hmm. They're and going to be doing gymnastics. Yeah. I think it's too chaotic to, um, you know, go after 19 people in the same courtroom. I feel like it, it's going to end up being split up. Yeah. That's what I see. Mm -hmm. Hey, did you see the letter that Fawny Willis, Willis wrote to Jim Jordan? Yes. I didn't, but it, a lot of people were asking about it, so we can go there next. Oh, my God. Know. I read it. She cut him a new one. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who is that, Jim Jordan? The the That goofy guy in the Senate that's always doing overreach. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They they should stop trying these 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 women. These women are tired. They're well, tired. Every, of them. every one of, of Trump's, you know, every place he was indicted, I think Jordan tried that. And it mm -hmm. blew up on his face, and it's going to this time. You know, they can talk about removing Fawny Willis, but that's not going to happen. Right. I'm yeah, sorry. Agree. My allergies are acting up. <laughs> well, and I said all along, too, I felt like Fawny's taking no prisoners. And when I had heard that uh, Jim Jordan was trying to interfere in her election, I felt like it was going to go the exact same way as how Bragg handled it. So. And, you know, Kevin, I always give you credit for this because you had said right along that this would, you know, that there would be an implosion of the Republican Party. I see yes. a lot more Republicans coming back to center, but yes. I think that this is starting at all, especially yeah. with the man. I got a massive download, I think, shortly after I started my channel that there were, I saw the, the Republican Party and like an implosion with that. And then they'd have to like start over. Yep. I've been seeing that, too. Me too. And, you know, when Cheney jumped ship, you know, when Cheney and Adam jumped ship, that's when I saw this is over for the Republican Party. As a matter of fact, I have a video I'm dropping about that because the Republican Party, you know, think about it, where they're sitting now, <laughs> they can't let a Democrat do the same things they're doing. No, I mean, they can't. So they they've got to cut it out. They've got to cut the cancer out. They've got to stop it. Yeah. 
You know, it's funny that you said that, Susan, because on the video I did last night, I said, you know, the things going on with the MAGAs are like cancer. And I tell people, you know, you, you can fear it, but you got to let that fear get behind you and push you forward. But that cancer needs to be cut out and it will be yeah. ultimately. We have to we have to acknowledge it, face it and deal with it. That's right. That's right. You know, when I was going into surgery, one of the I think she was uh, a resident and she you could tell she was you know, questioning me about, and she wouldn't say cancer. And I looked at her, I said, it's okay to say cancer. I've already come to terms with it. Mm -hmm. And so I think you're right, Susan. I think we really have to acknowledge it and not sweep it under the carpet any longer. Yeah. And I see things, uh, you know, my guides told me justice will prevail. Justice will be done. Yeah. So and that's what I'm going on. That's what I'm going on. Yeah. And ultimately, too, it's going to take the Republican parties a couple of election cycles to rebuild. But I do feel like um, they're a much better party and, and like most of a little bit more to the center. And I think even more open on the social issues because they know the way things are going right now that they can't win elections. Um, I see a bit in the of, of a shuffling in the Democratic Party, though, too, to be but not quite like the Republican Party. You know, what's going on with the MAGAs is really an American apartheid. And I see it ending, you know. Yeah. Um, they say they're not racist, but come on, we know they are. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious. Yeah. And, you know, once we fix the gerrymandering, you know, the only mm -hmm. way they're in office, they're not representing, it's just like you're saying too, Kevin, they're not representing the majority. The majority of Americans want choice. The majority mm -hmm. of Americans want these things. And the Republicans are just there. They're in the minority. They're just there because of gerrymandering and, and the way that they've mm -hmm. done the vote dirty. Well, and they're not keeping up with the current times either. I mean, um, you know, they're, they're still in the past. They want to take us back into the past. Yes. We have climate change coming up. And, yes. and, and we can't afford to stay in the past. We have to move to the present time. No. So they're going to have to change in order to. I agree um, with you. Because all they care about is keeping power in their own pocketbook. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, but I clearly, I like I said, I see a time when we're more back to center. But, you know, if they were smart, they would have never gotten rid of Liz Cheney. But I see her running at some point. Oh, I, I do too. I don't like her politics. I don't agree with that. But, you know, she had, you know, there's a Jewish word, chutzpah. It means courage fortitude and she had a lot of chutzpah when she stood up to donald trump and she she let it be known that you know she's not going to get hung up in the tribalism of, of trump or go to prison correct mm -hmm. exactly don't get susan started on liz cheney i'm sorry i said What's don't that? get susan started on liz cheney yeah, don't get don't get me started on liz cheney yeah well, well, go well, for I, it I, susan I, go for it no no i he knows this man knows from what he speaks. <laughs> no, you, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. And I, I agree with everything you guys are saying. I think that once um, once some of these, these Republican senators and Congress people get rung up, get convicted, uh, they're out, then the Republican Party's going to kind of kind of shuffle over to the center, like being good boys and girls, you know, so you don't come after me too. And, uh, and then we'll see what happens, you know? Yeah. I've always felt Cheney being instrumental in rebuilding the Republican Party. She will be. Yep. Because she's going to be left. That's she. Mm -hmm. All the other ones are going to be gone. Yeah. Um, I love what's going on in the party now that Matt Gates told um, Kevin McCarthy, if you don't, whatever it is, do something, you know, and one Biden? vote to get rid mm -hmm. of and I'm like, well, let's see how that plays out. <laughs> well, do we want to talk about that next? Because actually, I haven't seen any questions on the budget, but um, I do think, Casey, we'll get to your question after this. Um, I do think it's going to be a bit of a, a showdown towards the end of September. Budget done. Um, and the MAGA's trying to, to hold you know, the budget hostage and threatening McCarthy. And I've always felt like McCarthy's not in there for super long because the MAGAs get him out at some point. And I felt like at the, the what was it? The um, the last budget, it wasn't a budget, but um, the debt ceiling. Debt ceiling. That he, they may be forcing him out then, but I mean, maybe it's coming up with the budget here, but well, it's, it's going to be, 
night a nail biter for sure. It's a nail in his coffin if he doesn't put it through. Mm. Um, you know, we know that McCarthy, Gates, and uh, I don't even want to say her name. Mm. The ice queen Marjorie, you know, the fashion police should lock her up. Uh, um, we all know that they're taking orders directly from T. Rump. We know that. Mm -hmm. But um, it, that's going to be a nail biter. You're right, Kevin. Um, yeah. But you know what I see coming with, you know, local elections and things like that? I think it's going to be a repeat of what happened before. You know, the Republicans were saying it's going to be a red wave. And it, was, it wasn't even a pink trickle. Mm -hmm. But I see a lot more Democrats in states and local governments yeah, me uh, too. taking control. So, and that's a bellwether of what's coming for the for the Democrats. So, I see another blue wave coming. Mm, yeah. Do you feel McCarthy is going to put um, a vote on the floor to start impeachment? Um, I hope he does. Hope for he for Biden, does. I kind of feel like he will. I don't think I it's think going to. I don't think the inquiry is going to pass though. That's what it was. It was Matt Gates was telling McCarthy that they were going to draw up letter, uh, uh, articles of impeachment. If he didn't go for it, then he could be replaced. You know, let them. I don't, I'm not a lawyer. I don't know a lot about the Constitution, but I think you have to have just reason to draw up articles of impeachment. I don't know if anybody out there is a lawyer, you can let us know, but it will never, ever, even if it gets to the Senate, Schumer will knock it down in a nanosecond. Yeah, I think yeah. Mitch McConnell would knock it down. Well, I mean, there's really nothing there. It's all of their theatrics, you know. Um, you know, they're they're trying to do their Republican D's, divert, well, distract, an destroy anything that they can do, but it definitely backfire on them. An election year is coming up. Mm -hmm. And so rather than you know what really galls me is like, you know, you let Trump, his cronies commit all these crimes and you make it look like a witch hunt, but yet you go after Hunter Biden. Okay. Which if Hunter Biden's guilty, okay, then serve the time. Yeah. But what he did was minuscule compared yeah, to minu what, minuscule. Correct. But they're using that to try to they're it's using red meat. It. This is what they feed their base. I mean, it's this is right. it's just fodder for the cannon. They're using that to try to um make make uh, President Biden look bad, but it's not going to work. So, do you all see? Do you think that the budget is going to be passed by the end of the month, or do you think that um, you know the uh, the federal employees aren't getting paid for a few weeks? I see people getting paid, and I think if they're smart, they'll pass it because they're going to know it's a nail in their coffin. Mm. You know, a while a while ago, where the energy sat, I felt like it would get done just in time, but. Um, I do feel like the MAGAs caused some chaos. And I and it feels if it doesn't like a little through, delay. It, it feels like it's maybe a week or two. Yeah. Um, but I mean that's not going to serve them well when when federal that's like Mel said, yeah. I mean, that's, paid for two weeks. Well, I hope that doesn't so work because that kills our credit rating and that makes you know interest rates and all that go up. This is not but a that makes Biden look bad. That's what they want. They want chaos, yeah. they want Biden's yeah. economy to go in the crapper. Deceive, divert, detract, <laughs> distract, <laughs> divide, destroy. You know, yeah, that's what they want. They want the anarchy. They really do. It totally backfires on them, though. It, it, they're not getting. You know, maybe their MAGA base doesn't care, but independents, everybody else does. Under Republicans, you know, all of these federal workers who are Democrats and Republicans, they're not going to be happy. Um, you know, I I, I saw Elizabeth Warren the other night. I mean, I can see her. I think she'll, she, well, she's still a senator, but she'd be a good secretary of state, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. But um, I like what she had to say, you know, and she was saying pretty much what we're saying. Uh, but that she said she can't believe that some of these Republicans would allow this little group of MAGAs to tell the rest of the party what to do because the MAGAs are taking orders directly from Trump. And Kevin McCarthy needs to grow a set, uh, but I think he's fearful he won't be speaker. <laughs> right. He, he doesn't, he doesn't have a set, Mel. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> he, he doesn't have nice seeds. He doesn't have no way to grow a set. Maybe we should send him some testosterone and see what That's happens. a good idea. <laughs> Maybe some cream. <laughs> I love it. 
Yeah. What do you guys think of Tupperville in, in the blockade? Do that's what like I that was just going to bring up. Longer? I felt, I actually got a hit, um, I think it was earlier this week or Sunday. I felt like um, time is up. even maybe McConnell coming out against him and putting pressure on him and, and this getting settled rather quickly, like maybe yeah. in October. Yeah, I think his time is up. Yeah. I see him gone. Yeah. We see him under a probe. Yay. Um, and I see promotions happening in the military. Yeah. Woo! He makes about as much sense as a submarine with screen doors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a pretty good analogy for the whole Republican Party, to be honest Certainly with you. Does. Right. F full of leaks. <laughs> yeah. Screen doors on a submarine. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. Casey had asked, um, the grand jury in D.C. met today, and I think it was the first time since um, Trump was indicted. Um, do you feel more indictments coming for 45, or will there be new indictments for the unindicted? All of the above. I agree. All of the above. All of the above. I almost feel like what they met today was maybe for some of the co-conspirators that, um, mm -hmm. or you know, the other people that they're looking at. Um, I don't know. I do feel more trouble for Trump, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but if I almost feel like there may be some people that were plotting with the January 6th stuff that will get invaded here soon. And what that feels like it's multiple people? waves, too. Do you see the Congress people like Gates, Boebert? Not uh, right yet. Jordan? Not yet. But I I, I feel soon. I, see, I still see Matt Gates in trouble. <laughs> and I, think I still Marjorie Taylor Greene in trouble. Um, you know, yeah. MAGAs are going to say it's a witch hunt, but they can say anything they want. Uh, they're going to say whatever anyway. So do you guys see them getting <laughs> indicted before the end of the year or into spring of next year? Those Congress and senators. <clears throat> I still feel like it's going to be this year. You feel like it's going to be this year? Mm -hmm. Honey, I will send you a Christmas gift. Okay. <laughs> I will send you a Christmas gift. I How about you, Bill? Because it of the could COVID. possibly be spring too, because I do feel energy around that. But I feel energy in December too. Something's well, popping. If it goes into election year, they're going to say, "You see, it was the election. They did it." I the, know. That. So, do you see it, Mel, happening before the end of the year? I'm thinking more like January, February. January, February. Okay. But as we speak, I think they're already looking into stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. mean, yeah. you know. Um, the attorney general is keeping it very hush hush. And my guides yeah. told me he would keep things hush hush. And he did. Yeah. Merrick Garland. People didn't like Merrick because they did they thought he didn't move fast enough, but he wanted to make sure that he had the I's dotted, the T's crossed, the commas in place. That's what I picked up. His submarine does not have screen doors. No, it does not. <laughs> and it's not that submersible. I mean, it's iron. I mean, it's like it's not gonna implode, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. No, I see more it's slowing up very at the top of the surface, very, very slowly, though. A little too slow at times, I feel like. Well, when God was handing out patients, I stood in the attitude line, but I'd rather be, <laughs> I'd, rather, <laughs> I'd rather for him to go slow <clears throat> and be I angry. Agree. That's where I recognize you from. <laughs> <laughs> we were in the same day, <laughs> How do I recognize you from somewhere? We're, we're fighting over who's going to go first. <laughs> Yeah, probably. And we're both from Louisville, so you know, hey. There you go. A fellow yeah. fellow Louisvillian. And you said it right, Louisville. That's right. Lisa Lisa's in the house from Louisville. But I felt like indictments coming for you know, like the people responsible for planning it, like Giuliani and yes. and, and all of them. That's yes. where I was feeling energy with the meeting today. I hope he doesn't use brown dye when he's in court because he's going to be. <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. Um, I see more charges coming against Trump, like I said, for contempt. I do too. Well, I do too. Fresh, fresh charges. Arizona yeah. too. In Michigan, I feel for the. Um, oh, that's right. I, that's right. I forgot. The, um, yeah, the electors. I actually was picking up Michigan really strongly, but I do feel Arizona too. Do you feel like uh, Smith is going to pop any new charges on Trump? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I feel like Jack Smith has got something loading right now. He's loading a something. Couple up. More. Two more? A couple more. Well, yeah. he's a gazillion times smarter than Loose Cannon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he knows he can take stuff to, was it the 11th Circuit? And he's already had stuff that she's done overturned. So, you know, he's beating her at chess and he'll continue to beat her at chess. You know, Trump's lawyer is the guy he just hired in Georgia, is supposedly a good 
trial lawyer. I don't know. But, you know, Jack, Jack Smith knows his stuff. Yeah. And he knows he what he's doing. And um, at some point, I see Luce Tannen, like I said, off the court. So I see him filing a lot of lawsuits because she's doing overreach, which yes, she should yes. not do. Yes. And I read some of her opinions and I like, oh, my God, my dog could write that opinion. <laughs> So, you know, I saw her off the court, too. Do you see her off the court, Kevin? Yeah. Cannon? Yeah? yeah. So do you guys see her, like, getting disbarred uh, or just removed? Or what do you? Well, what I think they're going to say is we've got <laughs> this, 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 and that. If you resign, here's what will happen. If you don't, here's what we're going to do. So mm -hmm. I don't think they'll give her much of a choice. Uh -huh. And I don't even know if they'd let her go back to practicing law. No, That's interesting. pretty dang serious. Well, who's that woman in Georgia that was Trump's lawyer? I can't think of her name right now. That's right. That's right. The one that was representing and Fani said, you didn't even tell your own client that I'm offering them a plea deal. You're not representing your own clients mm. in their best interest. And she was a professor of law. She taught law. And Trump she got in the deal anyway. She got in trouble. Yeah. But who's the one under indictment? She was Trump's lawyer for a while. Oh, that was, uh, isn't that exactly. the Kraken one? Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I had predicted that she was going to be under indictment. And a lot of people said, no. Here we are. Watch. Mm. Have her Here we <laughs> are. Oh, yeah. Same with Giuliani. And that's what I see with Eileen Cannon. That is beautiful. That's so beautiful. Yeah. I don't know about I a feel male replacing Eileen Cannon. I'm sorry. Say again. I feel a male judge replacing her in the documents case. Works for me. And I do feel that there's, um, we were talking about more indictments from Jack. I do feel like there's more document um, related indictments too, eventually. See, I hope, in a way, Kevin, I hope you're wrong about a male judge replacing Lucy. Uh, because I would like to see a woman there who's just as tough as nails. All these women taking Trump down. You got all uh, these women. Tish James and Fani and E. Uh, Jean Carroll. E. Yes, yeah. And E. Jean Carroll's uh, uh, lawyer, Robbie. My guides told me a long time ago the women will bring him down. And here we are, guys. Mm. It's happening. I right thought it was Stormy Daniels, but that case isn't done yet. Yeah. And that, that whole case in New York about, you know, uh, that, yeah. sexual abuse of that woman, which he lost, and he's not going to win it on appeal. So he's going to have to pay. He's going to have to pay. And he's going to have to pay Ruby and that other uh, vote worker in Atlanta. Giuliani's going to have to pay. So all these people are the women, the women, the women, the women. Do you feel like... Um um, Ruby and um, I, I forget the other lady's name. I do too. Off the top of my head. Do you feel like they're going to actually get the money awarded to them? You think they're going to get it all? I don't know if they're going to get it all, but I think they're going to get a bunch. Okay. Well, if Trump tries to go bankrupt, then what they would do is they would come in and seize all that stuff, sell it off, and that money would go to her. I mean, well, if, if Rudy, Rudy has an apartment in New York, six million dollar apartment, if they, if mm -hmm. you know, it's just like Mel said, they're gonna, they're gonna appoint some sort of conservator who's gonna dole out the money, who's gonna take the assets. I saw yeah. somebody that that worked with Trump, and he was kvetching about, um, oh, I've already paid five hundred thousand dollars in legal fees, and he's and he's and he's uh, moaning about that. And I thought to myself, well, you should have thought about that before you broke For the law. Well, I was yeah. only doing what the president told me to do. Okay, well, that's what people said about Hitler, but you knew better. You knew it was wrong. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have any empathy for that. Right. Thank you, Mimi. Ruby and Shea Moss. Thank you. Ruby and Shea Moss. Hey. I, I don't think they're going to get it all, but I think they're going to get some money. What do you guys think? That's what I think. I see them getting a nice chunk of change, but maybe not all of it. Yeah, I definitely, I, I felt like it was maybe not what they wanted, but I felt something. But I, I felt like there was disappointment with it, too. I also see them putting a lien on some of Trump's holdings. Oh, God, I hope so. So mm -hmm. that, that when he sells them or gets rid of them, that these people have got to be paid, which I think is even better. <laughs> yeah, that's even better. Hi, me. Uh, next month with Tisha James starting her, her civil case against uh, Trump. And that's Who's, going to be very interesting. Who is? 
uh, Tish, uh, uh, Tish James. James in New York. Oh, wow. Her civil well, case. She's going to take Trump org down. She's going to win. Mm -hmm. The hits are going to come and come and come. And I'm then there's, there's criminal charges coming after this. That's what I think. Too. Yes. I want to say hi. I don't to think he's going to be alive for all that, but anyway. <laughs> right, right. Mimi sent me the most nice letter. Oh. She put $20 in there. She said, get yourself your favorite pop, which everybody knows is Fanta. Mm -hmm. Oh, Mimi, that was so nice. It was a beautiful card. Oh. I, I up. And uh, when I saw Mimi Rose, I thought I wanted to say thank you. Oh, that's sweet, Mimi. Mimi. Very sweet. Um, I see Mimi winning some more free sessions is what I see. <laughs> she sent me a Starbucks oh, gift card for my birthday um, in July. Very She's nice. a sweetie. She's a really nice lady. That is so sweet, Mimi. Okay, Mimi, don't get a big head. <laughs> this isn't necessarily a question, but um, I think something we'd all predicted. But Rose Blue said Abbott was ordered to remove the um, buoys over yes, the border. Yes. I didn't hear that. Yes. I didn't hear that either. I hadn't heard it yet either. Wonder who ordered him to do it. Probably the court. The feds. Mm hmm. Good. I it's mean, it's a an international to... border. It's not a Texas border. It's not like a freeway, right. <laughs> you know? I well, think... and there were a few people that died there too. And, yes. and when I first heard about it, I, I had a vision of um, a woman with a child hanging from it, and it was very disturbing. Oh, that's disturbing. Can you imagine when? Abbott crosses over and he goes to the good Lord and the good Lord said, well, how many people did you kill on your razor blade fence with those buoys? Mm -hmm. Good Lord will say, we're all full. And then when he goes to the devil, the devil will say, you know what? We don't want you either. So you're just going to float around forever. <laughs> yeah. You know, uh -oh. it's, it's kind of interesting when you were talking about that, they show me one of the proud boys that's in prison right now. And one of those boys, anyway, he, He's complaining about the food, the the audacity, and then he's saying that everybody hates him, that they're throwing feces on him, and I just love that because it, it's sort of like the devil that you're here, you are, and and they don't want you either. This is exactly what you're saying, right? It's like, you know, it's like uh, they're not they're not talking about one of the Proud Boys. Who's oh, already powerful. been in prison for about uh, six weeks or so, mm. and he's he was complaining about the food, and then he's now he's saying that all the other prisoners are throwing feces on him, and he's being treated, you know, inhumanely. No, should have thought about it. Like I care. <laughs> You're lucky. That's all they're throwing at you, sir. Exactly. Well, oh, don't. Well, you'll see what's in store for him. And the more he squawks. <laughs> The more they're going to continue to the do. The more it. they'll. I don't see a long life for him. Yeah, he he looks like he has heart. He's got a barrel chest kind. Of, looks like he's got energy here. No, I just think there's some stuff that's going to happen. To oh, him. I see. You think there's going to be a uh... correct? Well, it could be. I'll leave it at could that. Be. Yeah. I don't want to give it energy. I don't want to see that happen to anybody. Of course, I kind of like the feces thing. <laughs> <laughs> Here. It reminds me of Game of Thrones. Shame. <laughs> and it's interesting. I wonder if they're doing it because remember in Jan 6, wasn't there feces everywhere on right. on the walls, on the floor? Like, what's Pelosi's wrong? Office. What's wrong with these animals? That's exactly mm. why they're doing it. Yeah, it's kind of a little bit of a comeuppance. <laughs> you know, with Abbott, I think they should take him out there in that wheelchair. Uh -oh. Make him hold on to one of those buoys. And a strong current, and let's see how he likes it on a mm -hmm. hot day with no water. Yeah, well, right. He can yeah. have all the salt water. Um, well, is it salt water that separates it? Probably not, but mm -hmm. but you can't drink that water, right? It's good, but it's not going to be pleasant. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't want to see harm come to him, but yeah, disgusting. Oh, um, no. she requested, but it's Georgia law. I thought that they can, that it's public. I thought it's Georgia law that it's automatically public. Yeah. Well, I think that that's what she's trying to request to, to, to prevent their names to come out because of the well, last they should because all of the, um, well, that judge told Donald Trump that he cannot harass the jurors, 
the witnesses or anything like that through social media, through yeah. second party, third party. I mean, I read it. It's pretty like, I mean, it's pretty extensive about. And so I think that she's doing that because she probably feels like Trump won't follow the judge's order and she's trying to protect the jurors. I, there might be some kind of caveat around it, like if 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 you know that it's going to put them in danger or something. Mm. So I got a funny feeling she's going to be able to keep their names out of the paper for a while. Okay. I think Trump is going to say, well, we need them because we need <laughs> to know, you know who they are and why, for what purpose. <laughs> so they can tell I, I hope you're right, Mel, because I, because I don't have the best feeling about the civil unrest in Georgia. I do feel like there's there's some energy there. So well, I it's agree. very important to keep and that's um, what Trump wants. Protected. Yeah. But you know what? If he does that, then there's going to be more charges against him for inciting riots down there. Mm. But we have to we have to connect him to it. You know, that's going to be the problem going forward. Even if they muzzle Trump, he's going to get a proxy. He's going to have Matt Gates. He's mm -hmm. going to have, you know, Bobert. He's going to have people talking for him but you know he's he, he thinks he's smart but he but he but he tells you what he's going to do before he does it and he always opens his mouth and incriminates. that's true his. i mean it is true they broadcast everything they're thinking of doing everything they've done yeah and that's exactly what i see in the future in georgia violence erupts you know yeah and he'll open his mouth and it's like okay and you know when they're investigating you they don't have to tell you so I see some investigations that are taking place that are secret, but uh, but I do think that that judge down there will protect the jurors and the witnesses and all that stuff. I hope so because yeah, yeah. that's a travesty. I mean, we can't ask people to put their lives on the on the line like that and not protect them. Well, it boils down to jury tampering, is what it is, and I see him being held in contempt and at some point being charged with jury jury tam tam tampering which is yeah. a which is another huge charge yeah i agree with that mo um well we've been on for almost an hour i feel good to go for a little bit longer if you both do i'm fine i'm on a roll <laughs> yeah um i hadn't heard of this but rose blue says that uh the Texas National Guard now on paid leave was the shooting across the Rio Grande, 30-year-old Mexican injured. Was that the last straw for the federal government with Abbott? I think Abbott's put a lot of last straws with the federal government. That's what I'm feeling, too. I didn't, I didn't hear about that incident. but uh, I didn't hear about mean? it either. I hadn't heard of it either. But you know what? Um, well, with... Um, the AG that's getting impeached right now, Paxton. Paxton. I feel like Paxton taking a couple people down too, and maybe some trouble coming from for Abbott because of him. Oh, he's I gonna, agree. He's going to steal agree. on Abbott. You're right. Mm -hmm. I he's agree. Steal on a lot of I feel like three people he takes down with him. Yes, so I agree. But you got five. Yeah, but two more more minor stuff. But mm. three really heavy. Oh, for what is three? <laughs> three really heavy stuff. So. <laughs> I was like three. I know, Mel. That's four. Well, maybe, maybe Spirit is saying four. Look, don't argue. We'll take four. I won't argue with Spirit, that's right? Sure. Well, um, what do you see with with um, Paxton? Do you think he'll be impeached and removed? And in jail. In jail. Uh, yeah, and I definitely. In jail. jail. And in jail. And I think it's it, very uh, close with the impeachment, though. To me, like it's only one or two votes. It's going to be close. Way. Yeah, it's going to be closer than it should be. But they have 30 freaking indictments. I mean, they've got mm. they've got some pretty damning evidence. He's been uh, under an indictment for like eight or nine years now, yes, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Crazy. In the Texas and, and his attorney is this guy, Busby. And Busby used to be a Democrat. He's a big, big defense attorney, you know, an ambulance chaser attorney. Big, mm. big, big guy. He was a Democrat, flipped to the Republicans when everybody went Republican. But now he's in the courtroom or in the, the, the Senate orange. He freaking looks like Trump. He's literally <laughs> orange, you guys. And, and even the journalists are saying, what's going on? Because this guy's a big prominent fixture in the Houston area. I mean, we all know him. 
yeah. to look at him and now he's orange. It's like, this is, is well, it have you ended with the spray tan? Yes. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, well, it's know, not when, human, y'all. It's not, does not look human. Well, Susan, you know this many years ago, a lot of the South was a Demo was Democrat. Yeah, for sure. Because yeah. they were, well, they were then, Democrats were then kind of what Republicans are now. Yeah, they were kind of Dixiecrats is what they used to call exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so, you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln was a Republican, but he's really angry about what's going on in this country. Right, I, right. I can't yeah. that, so. So when the you, thing about Paxton's wife, I read on this a while back. So Paxton's know. wife is a Texas state senator. Mm -hmm. His own wife is a senator. He's the AG. And she was like, I'm not stepping down. And I read a month ago that she was not going to be voting. Either she steps down, they remove her or something. So they basically censured her and said, you cannot vote. Right. But she is there in the audience, and that actually tips the scales because um, it goes on how many senators are in the audience. That matters. So if she wasn't in the audience, it would actually be worse for her husband. So she's at least doing that. Um, I think he's going should. down, you guys. He's going down, and I agree with you that, um, Kevin, that, that he's going to bring some others – both mm -hmm. of you said it. He's going to bring some others with him. He's going to bring leadership with him. Yep, I agree. Big time. And I think it's going to be crucial to, um, how do I want to say this? Because we, we have to be careful with what we say on YouTube. But I think um, Texas feels better in 2024. When, there you the go. That's right. I agree with that. Might be more purple. We might yeah. be more purple. But it really should have been purple a couple elections. It I was. Opinion. I think it was. But Paxton yeah. and Abbott, you know, uh, yeah. decided that, what was it, two million votes? Well, then you have proof that they messed with the election. Yeah. And, you know, if they can prove that Abbott knew about it and didn't stop it, that might make, make him, you know, um, what do they call it, co-conspirator? or Yeah, right, right. An accomplice. An accomplice. So. And Rose Blue said, so Paxton, Rose Blue said they just found another mistress. So Paxton had this mistress and his wife is still standing there trying to help him. But uh, part of the problem was he paid his mistress out of campaign funds, I think, just like Trump did. Um, yeah. Now, apparently, they found another mistress. Ooh. So, you know, when you said that, my psychic light bulb went on. And I see one of his, I see one of his mistresses singing like a canary. Oh my God! I wonder if that's the new one. Um, probably she's gonna she's gonna work with a prosecution on this one. Uh, he told her a little bit too much. You know, I, I think that Texas House and Senate is largely Republican. Yeah, but it is. They don't they don't want Paxton around. It's a lot of them don't want Paxton around because they know he's pulling them all down, yeah. and they're you know they don't want they want to cut you know the bad stuff off. Mm -hmm. Um, I see Beto at some point um, yeah. holding a high office. It's so good. Yeah. I don't think he's done running for governor in Texas. I've always thought senator. senator, and me and Susan are on the same page. On yeah, I always see him as senator. But, but you know, if he wants to run for, for governor and spirit, wants to rubber stamp that, then I'm yeah. good with it. Yeah, yeah. me too. Because um, <clears throat> he's a really good guy. I yeah. see Bubba in deep doo-doo. I just want to say I'm sorry, Mel. No, I said I'm Paxton as well. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to Julie for the super chat. And I saw a couple more that I didn't acknowledge. I just want to say. Julie, you've got deep taste. She goes, hi, Mel, Susan, and Kevin, three of my favorite readers. She's got Aww. real taste. <laughs> and Chili Dog. Chili Dog yeah. gave a super chat. Uh, and Two Hugger. Three Hugger. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Before we end, I do want to touch on I want to touch on uh, McConnell briefly. Yeah. Because I just saw him. I got a, and I don't know. I want to know what you guys get. And and again, spirit, we are not encouraging or suggesting that anybody cross over. We're simply talking about the odds, the way we may be talking about rain. Is it going to rain today? Is it going to rain next month? That's all I'm saying. 
Okay. For entertainment purposes only. Yeah, that's right. Uh, thank you, Joan. That's very sweet of you. Thank you, Joan. Um, so do you guys, I mean, I know he's doing the, you know, Pettit Mall or whatever the seizures he's having. And I know that people have those and sometimes it never gets any worse. But I saw distinctly a boom, boom, like a stroke, like a boom to mm. boom. I saw it distinctly with Meccano. Do you guys pick up on that at all, like in the next couple of months? See, I mean, I'm not a doctor. But when I watched him, petite mal seizures can kind of look like that. But I'm thinking he's probably having some TIAs, transient ischemic attacks. They say no. I don't think they want that out. And my feeling is obviously his staff knows something's going on because the last one he had they kind of knew what to do and they didn't seem like all up in the air about it. That's right. Yeah. But I, right. I do see him having, you know, for a long time, I've been saying that I didn't see him living long and I clearly don't wish the guy harm. Yeah. But uh, I, my guides keep showing me a massive CVA. CVA means cerebral vascular accident, which means stroke. That's what I saw. Okay. Yeah. How about you? I'm kind of on the same page too. Um, you know, I had I had felt when he had his first fall that there were going to be more falls and more incidences since then, and I did not feel like he was going to finish out his term. Um, and I think that's why he fell because he was having those TIAs. Yeah, I agree. I agree with that, Mo. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel him. I get that he's trying to fight it, but I think that the health issues is he's not going to be able to serve anymore. But he doesn't want to step down, but he'll have to. Either I, I thought that he wanted to die on the Senate floor. Mm -hmm. That's what his energy said to me. I just want to die right here. And I get that his family's trying to pressure him to, okay, it's time to, to retire with his wife. You um, know, Stephen, when you said that, I got cold chills. Yeah. I hear that's a yes. That, you know, passing away on the Senate floor. <laughs> And then you guys heard that the, the governor of Kentucky is saying that he is going to replace McConnell, even though the state of Kentucky passed a law that says the governor doesn't replace the senator anymore. We're going to replace the senator. But apparently mm. that flies in the face of the Constitution of the United States. And Bashir is like, <laughs> we're just going to have to litigate this. I'm going to replace McConnell if he steps down. And y'all take me to court. And they, and they won't win. <clears throat> and they're not going to win. For sure, I think, you know, he's a Democrat. His father was a governor down there. And his dad was a Democrat also. I think, you know, a lot of people in Kentucky really like him. He's a good governor. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so, I do too. Um, I can, I can definitely like feel McConnell. like... I'm sorry? I, nobody likes McConnell. No. Right. Um, I could see Bashir trying to um, put somebody else in, and and it does. When you were saying like a legal fight, I that really resonated with me, Susan. Well, they can try it, but they won't win. They won't yeah. win. Do you see the other thing I got, or I tried to piece together was so I saw McConnell not in his seat, but then I saw his seat open. So I wonder if the seat stays open while it's litigated. Do you guys see that? And I'm cool with that because if there's no McConnell mm -hmm. blocking anything, I'd rather have an empty seat than a McConnell seat. Um, I'm getting a yes. Yes, on having to replace somebody. Go ahead, Kevin. I'm sorry. No, I'm getting a yes that it would stay empty. Empty? But, you know, it's really interesting, too, because with, like, I've been saying the the end of the Republican Party and it imploding and it yep. um, Trump taking it down. But wouldn't it be something if if the Senate, um, you know, minority leader um, who's been in charge, if there's an ending there, too, that's not helping the case, is it? That's not helping the case because as crazy as McConnell is, he tries to have the, you know, buoy the Freedom Caucus in the House. He tries to keep them from being that shit crazy in the Senate, you know? And when he's gone, then it's just going to be mayhem. Um, I do see an empty seat for a while, the answer to okay, that. Okay, so there you go. But I still see a Democrat in that seat. Eventually. Okay. I do too. I see a Democrat in that seat. And I think, and someone was asking, how does McConnell keep winning? 
gerrymandering. And I, and honestly, when McConnell won, my guide said he didn't win. So I don't know what happened with the voting and the machines or whatever or whatever, but something hinky happened. One of my cousins down in Kentucky, she's a Democrat like me. There are few and far between down there. So. But uh, she said the same thing, that they felt there was cheating going on. So whether or not it happened, you know, but the, yeah, a lot of people in Kentucky felt that. I don't think just Kentucky. Yeah, well, that's right. true. Not just Kentucky. That's true. But a lot of people, a lot of people in Kentucky, even if they're Republican, they don't like Moscow Mitch. Yeah. Yeah. No. He hasn't done it. Honestly, he hasn't done anything. He tried to get that aluminum. Wasn't it him? Or was it Rand Paul that tried to get the aluminum plant? Anyway. It was uh, Brillo Pad. It was Brillo Pad. <laughs> See, I, I don't know. Who do you guys think would replace McConnell then as leader? Or as minority? Is it soon that second in command? Because I felt energy around him. Oh, yeah. Karen. I don't think yeah, long term, soon. though. Doesn't, he doesn't seem like he's in there for that long. Maybe when the Republican Party crumbles and they have to rebrand, there's change 24. in leadership. Yeah. I'll have to look it up. Uh, is he MAGA? Yeah. Oh, right. No, he is he MAGA? I think he's MAGA light. Ooh. Light, yeah. I see somebody in there that'll be fair-minded for a Republican. <laughs> he's trying to play both sides. I mean, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Look at McCarthy. You cannot play both sides. You're either... Crazy or not crazy? Because McCarthy is not a good politician. You know, if you're a good politician, you learn to reach across the aisle and you don't let a minority of people tell you how to how to do what you do. You know, I mean, if a good politician would tell them, hey, we're not going down that road. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I don't think that McCarthy, well, like we said, he doesn't have a certain part of the anatomy. Yeah. Yeah, Louisville is a democratic city, a lot like Atlanta is in Georgia, right? And so is Lexington. Lexington? Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I didn't know that. My great niece lives in Lexington. She's a respiratory therapist, and she tells me that, yeah, it's, it's pretty Democrat in Lexington. So. What? That's awesome. That is purple. We're going purple in Kentucky, y'all. Now you get outside Lexington a little bit. It's real red. Yeah. yeah. Oh, girlfriend, it's redder than red. <laughs> red, red, red. They got the tobacco spittle running down their mouth. <laughs> exactly. She says John Thune, John Cornyn, and John Barrasso are the three leaning candidates. Are the what? The three leaning candidates if, if they had to replace me. Okay, over my dead body, John Cornyn. Over my dead body, I don't care. I know I said it. I stand by it. Go ahead, spirit. Take me down. Now, what, did, what did you say? Who? I'm sorry. John Cornyn. He's from Texas. He cannot be. Cannot. <laughs> we can't do it. I can't do it, y'all. I can't do it. I don't okay. think it'll be Never him. Mind. I think. Thank you. I think Just the, lie to me, Mel. I don't care. I don't care. Lie. I think a lot of the senators are smart enough other than Diablo himself, Ted Cruz. He's living proof people really did copulate with mountain goats. Because he looks like <laughs> one. Our That's some shade on mountain goats, Mel. That's some shade <laughs> on some mountain goats right there. Nothing against mountain goats. <laughs> I'm saying we need the mountain goat vote. Okay, John but Thune. I, I think, think John Thune. I think a lot of those senators, Republican senators, don't want John Cornyn. So I don't see him in that. I'm position. telling y'all, I will have a, I will have a decompensation. Y'all will have to send help. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. I don't think it's going to be. Do him. I don't feel it. Okay, uh, good. I'll, I'll send you the value. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thanks. Not I appreciate real. you. When that actually you. happens and who's emerging, I think it will probably be easier to read. But John Thune was kind of sticking out to me. I think it might be John Thune. I don't know about John Barrasso mm -hmm. um, too much, but John Thune, I think, has been around longer than Barrasso, mm -hmm. or else he has a better name recognition. Yeah. I probably think it's Thune. That's what I Can think. We Let's end on this um, question. Um, Aspie wants to know, she says, Gloria Johnson in Tennessee is running for U.S. Senate against Marsha Blackburn. Might she win? She was part of the tennis, Tennessee Three Melt. Um, you, you remember those two, um, I don't remember their names, but the-, the Well, they're both their names are Justin. <laughs> Justin. Justin and Justin. Yeah. Remember that they were- Oh, removed? yeah, the Tennessee Three. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 
Well, she's got, you know, people were really mad about that. Yeah. And one of those senators, I think, wasn't it? State senator yeah. that we tried to get rid of. He's going to come up really quick in the Democratic Party. So, yeah, well, they all will. Yeah. So my point is, if she runs Gloria Johnson, right? Um, no, wait, who was Gloria Johnson was the one they got rid of, right? No, it was the two men. She was the one that they kept by one vote. Um, well, she was hopping mad. She was yeah, hopping she was. mad. And she's running against Marsha Blackburn. My feeling is if she really politics and gets out there and knocks on doors and things like that, that she could really win uh, specifically with minority votes. I yeah. think she's going to do it. I really think there's really good energy that she's going to do it. So do I. And I was picking up that there's a movement behind her. So kind of like knocking on the door, yeah. kind of like a yeah. grassroots effort. I it think does. it will be very close, but I definitely. It's a Hail sure Mary. It, it, there's a lot of energy around her. So it's definitely she's, possible. She's got good enough chance that, that if anybody has 20 bucks or five bucks, send it to her. She, yeah. you're, you're not wasting your money. She really has a chance oh, to do she's going to run. I'll donate. Um, she reminds me of Reverend Warnock. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. In Georgia. Yeah. You know, he seemed like the underdog, and look what happened. And that's yep. kind of how I sit with Gloria. That's not kind of how I sit. That's how I see it. I love Gloria. She's amazing. I, I mean, she's just true to herself. Mm -hmm. She's not bought, sold. She knows what the people want. She's in touch with the people. Um, she's amazing. And I love her support of the Justins. I love that it's the Tennessee three. I see a lot more states turning purple in the South. Yeah, I do too. You no, know, there's certain Southern states. <coughs> I don't think so. But, um, but I can see a point in time when Tennessee and Kentucky would be purple. Yeah. And Florida, once the Satan is gone. When you yeah, see him going. It feels a bit tough in Florida for a little while. I feel yeah. better about Texas first before Florida. I'm surprised that Satan made it this long. You know, mm -hmm. when I heard he was a history teacher, you can't say gay. You can't, you know, have certain books in school, which he tried to backpedal on. You can't do this. But a lot of that's going to go to the Supreme Court. And they're going to overturn a lot of that nonsense. So, yeah. But I see just to Satan gone. But Kevin, I agree. I think Abbott's going to catch his Waterloo first. Yeah, me too. That's a good way to put it. His Waterloo. I agree. I agree with you guys. I think the Satan is going to be gone. Um, it's just a matter of of when. You know what I mean? His days are numbered, is what they just said to me. Good. Tomorrow at two thirty. <laughs> I, I, but I do feel like there's a lot of lessons in it, and it's a, it's pretty tough in florida for it, the energy in florida is the worst in my opinion it's the worst I, of the whole country a lot of I, people coming out of florida because they don't like mm -hmm. this yeah Heck, you can't go there now you can't go if you're black you can't go if you're gay you can't go if you're trans you probably shouldn't go if you're jewish um <laughs> i mean well don't buy a house there because you can't get insurance for it if you live by the water yeah. either yeah it's it's plus, terrible plus they paved the roads he passed that law where they could pave the roads with uh mm. with oh god that's right radioactive radioactive, radioactive low-level radioactive waste it's terrible i'll tell you who's going to bring down to satan is mickey mouse i agree <laughs> you don't mess with mickey or minnie you do not mess mm. with the mouse and they're not going to give it up disney's no, not they're not going to give it up yeah. they're going to win too and they wear gloves, so there won't be any fingerprints on yeah, that hit job. <laughs> I could say something, but we'd clearly go to YouTube jail, so I can't say <laughs> Well, we're on Kevin's channel. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, send me to YouTube jail. Send Kevin to YouTube. We got bail yeah. money, Kevin. Don't worry. I've I've had I've had a, a not very nice word or two slip out from time to time, and, and they didn't throw the book at me. So yeah, but what I'm thinking is pretty bad. But okay, <laughs> I'll just say what's going to happen to to Satan uh, is, you know, Disney is going to put it where the sun doesn't shine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that was really good, wasn't it? That was but, pretty good. Can't go to YouTube jail for that. Very careful. <laughs> very careful. <laughs> Well, you guys, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed um, our trio tonight. I love this. Let's do it again. This was fun. Let's do it yes, again. It's a lot again. of fun. And Susan Lynn, um, email her and Kevin too, but 
This way, you know, your name's on a list. So when she does another one of the Susan Lynn gigs, then. Thanks, Mel. Yeah, and yeah. I don't know. I know a lot of people. It's, I feel like I know a lot of people that are going to Italy with you. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to go to Italy with Mel? Well, this trip is like 21 people. And it's it's. Uh, I start selling it like, you know, I'm already working on 2025. And so, really? people, yeah, people Where say. Where are you well, going? Um, I think 2025 is going to be a cruise on the Mekong River. Uh, Holy smokes. Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam. And I've heard people that have done it. It's supposed to be amazing. And then I think um, probably a trip to the Galapagos. My great niece talked me into oh, that. A lot of people are showing interest. Next summer, I have a tour starting on the Rhine River up in Amsterdam. It comes all the way down through Germany. It in, uh, we stop in Strasbourg, France. It ends in Switzerland. I think it's like eleven days. And I'm and the the tour. Well, there was it was ninety people, but I but I've got forty going. So wow, our cruises and tours they sell it. Well, they're the ones that, that put the tours together. Wow. And then uh, I'm working on a trip for next June to go to Kenya and Tanzania, and that's going to be an amazing trip. Wow. So, but that and only takes twenty people. Do they go to your website? What I do is I talk about it on YouTube and I tell people who seem interested. And if I don't get a good feeling, I just say we're full. <laughs> but I, what I'm saying is I don't get a good feeling with you. But um, um, and then, you know, it's on my YouTube channel. They can go, you know, call my office or email okay. me. Okay. And then Joan at the office will uh, call them back and, and she'll give them my cell phone number and have them call me. And, you know, it's. Um, I, you know, if I, if I, if I get 15 or more people, I get a free trip. Hey, and hi, so, hi. Yeah. Right. I'm able to travel. And so this last trip to Uganda was amazing. Oh my wow. God. Mm -hmm. We were so close to the mountain gorillas. It was phenomenal. And the chimpanzees too. You have to wear a surgical mask because they get diseases we get. Wow. It was just incredible. And it was, it was a cultural experience too. And so the trip to Ken Kenya and Tanzania, we won't, we're going to be on the savannah, but we'll go in a crater. I think is it Ngorongoro? I forget. But that's where the the black rhino lives, and they're endangered. So we'll get to see them and all kinds of crap. And um, you know, the wildebeest start their migration. And there's oh, that's supposed to be amazing. It is. And there's I've never been, but I've heard people. That I've are, heard about it. Yeah, and it, there's an optional balloon ride, hot air balloon ride over the Serengeti, so we can actually see. Oh them. my really God, fun. you're making me super jealous. Do you, you like to travel, Kevin? I do. When I uh, when I get around to it, I haven't really done a whole lot of traveling lately. But uh, the only problem here is, too. is it takes a long time to get there because yeah. there's no direct flight, so you have to fly to Amsterdam. And then yeah. Amsterdam, like it's nine hours from here to Amsterdam. And then from Amsterdam to Entebbe, that was another 10 hours. And so, you know, you're flying for over 20, 20 hours and then counting the layovers in the airport. But, you know, I, I don't sleep on airplanes, but I was able to, to cop a few Z's. And um, I was excited because I'm like, hey, I'll put up with the long flight because I'm going to see these animals. And I fell in love with Africa. It's amazing. So. Wow. Look at that. Diva. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Everybody, I told everybody, you know, I've been selling this trip since last October. And I wasn't going to take it, but my friends, Don and Larry. Hi, Don and Larry. Um, they were with us in Croatia last summer and it was so hot. So Don said, mm -hmm. We want to do Italy. We want to do it in October so it's not so hot. And he goes, we have five people plus Larry and I. That makes seven. And I said, well, if you've got seven people, I can sell the rest of this trip. So they convinced me to do it. And um, I'm, I'm excited about it. So uh, we're going to have a I'm lot. jealous about it. No. <laughs> you had an awesome, awesome adventures coming in. Well, this one we we uh, we go we go to Venice, and then from Venice it's tr by train. And uh, we'll be two or three days in Venice, and we, you know, we a boat takes us to our hotel, nice. and then, uh, then we take the train to Florence, and we tour Florence, and then from there Monte Catini, Monte Catini for three days. Uh, oh, my chair's squeaking. I know it squeaks. I'm a little squeaky too. You know what? I don't want to oil it. That's too simple. <laughs> there. How about how's that? Um, actually, it's my husband's chair. So Monte Catini, and then from there uh, we go to Pisa, Siena. 
and then we take the train back to Florence and Flor from Florence to Rome, and we're in Rome for three days. In so, oh my God, you're gonna have a it's blast. Gonna, it's gonna be fun. One thing I can guarantee people, and I don't mean this to sound egotistical, but on my trips, everybody is guaranteed to have a fun time. You know? um, I, I tell people, put the computers away. The only thing you can use your cell phone for is taking pictures. We don't care about political affiliation, religion, nothing like that. We're going to have fun. And you see people make that transformation and just mm. lay back. It's, and it's, it's the fun. escape, getting the escape, right? right? Exactly. If you guys are interested, go to Mel's website, which is, is it Mel Door? It's www.meldor.com. Okay. Go to his website, contact his office. They can tell you the whole, the whole shebang. Thing. Yeah, and Susan. <laughs> and I have all of our contact information in the description box. So thank you, Kevin. Anybody wants a reading with Mel or Susan or myself, um, I have all of our information on how to get a hold of us in the description box. Get a reading from Kevin. He's amazing. And if you need Reiki, he's really good at Reiki. Thank and get you. a reading from Susan. She's as equally as amazing. And so I've been busy you know, since my last show with Susan. Yay. A lot of people reaching out. So thank you. I'm telling you guys, honestly, where we are right now as Americans in this crazy, you know, mm. situation, you guys should be calling up Kevin to get <laughs> Reiki, to get your energy, you know, who get it. If you can't yeah. go to Italy with Mel, then next best thing is you better be calling Kevin. Because <laughs> your some energy soon. needs to be, you know. You'll be oh, feeling man. a lot more stress-free and, and all the chaos around you, around yes. us going on in the world. Especially the fear, world. right? And I can, Reiki yeah. can help with that. I know yeah. when I had, you know, when I first found out I had cancer, I would talk to Kevin and he goes, you're going to beat this. They're going to get it all. And he sent lots of healing energy. I talked to Kevin. He talked me off the ledges. Linda Grindle talked me off the ledges. Um, you know, there were people who talk me off the ledge you know so it's okay to spiral but i'm sure a lot of the reiki and healing energy that kevin sent helped a great deal in fact i'm sure it did so well this is what i'm saying we the, we talked about it in the beginning our community yeah. is amazing right in the chat there are reiki people there are supporters you know mm -hmm. we, you we have each other you know uh somebody said divas that don't forget about susan's event mm -hmm. double tree rosemont illinois October 13th, 14th, 15th. Uh, you said you're going to have six or five plus you, right? Six. There's six three, plus three. me, seven of us. The seven. Okay. It's sold out. But, you know, if you're interested, go to, um, how do they go to your website, Susan? Oh, yeah. Susan Lynn Medium, www.susanlynnmedium.com. Okay. And, you know. And there's a waiting list and you can get on the waiting list. And then your name is there in case, you know, whenever, not in case, but when she's got future events. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Mel. There's definitely Thank you guys. Future this has event. been so You're much too. fun. Yeah. It's gonna be a blast. This has been fun. Let's do it again. I enjoyed this. I yeah. really I feel better. You yeah. know, like um uh, when I first met Kevin, you know, when I a lot of times when I have people on my channel, I'll say, Can you give me a reading? <laughs> and he was amazing. So you oh, know, I know. If you yeah, don't want like you get a reading from Kevin. Mm. Plus his energy, Kevin's energy is just like, it's like being in an energetic womb of happiness. It's like, whoo, okay, I feel better already. And besides that, he likes dogs. And if besides that, he likes dogs. Yeah. So, yeah. Besides right. that, he's freaking yeah. accurate. He's also, you know, this Reiki <laughs> magic healer on one side. And on the other side, he's this totally accurate killer psychic predictor. You know, it's like, I love that combination. You both are trying to blow up my ego here. <laughs> well, thank you. I'll get a safety pin and deflate it a little. Deflate bit. it a little bit. All right. Just hold. Just hold your skirt down. It's okay. Mm. I love that. Hold down your skirt, girl. <laughs> well, I am a Leo, so you know things can go to our heads pretty quickly. So. Oh, I haven't. I can't even imagine that with you. I really can't. You're super grounded. It's it, oh. it, it's definitely been a, a long journey. So. Well, a lot of work towards that. <laughs> I'm a total Aries. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> all right, you guys. Well, we this was great. Please do us a favor. Please hit that thumbs up. Please go subscribe to all of our channels. Um, 
and hopefully we can do this again sometime soon. So do it. we'll Any do this. Time. Right. Sending you a lot of love. Oh, the queen did that, right? <laughs> yes. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Bye.